If I say digital night vision technology has caught up with image intensifier tubes, would you believe me? These are the ADN-V G14SE and G14P2 digital night vision monoculars. They perform at the same levels as Gen 2 and Gen 3 image intensifier tubes. These are the two ADN-V digital night vision monoculars that we will be testing today. On our left, we have the ADN-V G14SE, which is an entry-level monocular with a 2 thirds inch sensor, and on our right, we have the G14P2, which is ADN-V's flagship monocular with a 1 inch CMOS sensor. We will compare them to analog night vision devices with image intensifier tubes all the way from a Gen 2 MVT4 to a Gen 3 Omni 8, and we also compare them to a more traditional digital night vision device that is the NVG30. Alright, let's get the test started. Under moonless starlight conditions, the G14 SE and P2 easily beat the NVG30. However, while the G14 P2 does perform better than a low spec NVT4, the G14 SE kind of falls behind a little. And now comparing to a high spec MVT4 and the MVT7, which are both high end Gen 2 Plus tubes, we can see that the G14 SE is starting to fall further behind. However, the G14 P2 is still performing very well. And now comparing them to mil spec Russian and US Gen 3 tubes, we can see that the G14 SE is still falling behind by quite a margin, but the G14 P2 is still performing at at least an equivalent level. Alright, now moving under some tree cover for even darker conditions, we can see that the NVG30 is starting to fall apart. The G14 SE, while better than the NVG30, still falls behind the Gen 2 Plus tube. However, the G14 P2 is still the best over here. And comparing to high-end Gen 2 Plus tubes under these conditions also yields similar results as before, with the G14 SE producing a usable image but falling behind the analog intensifier tubes, and with the G14 P2 either matching or surpassing the performance of the tubes. And the same is also the case when comparing the digital devices to Gen 3 tubes. We'll let the results speak for themselves. And now we have moved indoors to NL5 to NL6 levels of extreme darkness. Here, the NVG30 and the G14 SE are basically out, but the G14 P2 can actually still see stuff. And yeah, over here, only the G14P2 and the NVT7 are providing a discernible image. And interestingly, if you switch the G14P2 into the 50 frames per second mode, it actually looks better than the NVT7. And now, comparing the G14 series to Gen 3 analog night vision devices, we can see that the G14P2 is actually keeping up rather well with the Omni 8 Gen 3, especially with the G14P2 in the 50 frames per second mode. And here is a zoomed in view to confirm our findings. <laughs> I'll be honest, I never thought I'd live to see the day where digital night vision has caught up to Gen 3. However, a remaining cause for concern with the G14P2 and the G14SE is that their sensors only have 800 by 600 resolution. Considering that most intensifier tubes can resolve at least 1200 line pairs across the entire image, we really have to ask whether the 800 by 600 pixel resolution of the sensors can really hold up to intensifier tubes. Well, let's test it out. We're gonna compare the effective resolution of the ADNV G14 series to that of analog intensifier tubes. We're gonna use this ISO 12233 test chart with a light source that can vary between 0.01 lux to 10,000 lux. 
And these are the analog intensifier tube devices that we'll be comparing to the G14 series. They include the CTC PVS14 with the NVT4 tube, and a Yaksa 14 with Argus glass and an NVT7 tube. The Gen 3 L3 PVS14 is excluded from this test because while its Carson glass is sharp, it does exhibit severe field curvature effect when focused to extreme close distances. So these are the horizontal and vertical resolution results in one lux of highlighting. In conditions this bright, the resolving power of the tube matters much less than the resolving power of the lenses on the unit. And in this case, we can see that the NVT7 in the Yaksa 14 clearly wins. But the ADNV digital units aren't far behind either. And these are the results with the test chart light source set all the way down to the lowest setting, which measures around 0.005 lux. These lighting conditions are almost equivalent to NL4 starlight, maybe with just a tiny sliver of moon. And here we can see that the NVT7 Gen 2 Plus tube is taking a lead over the G14 series. However, does this difference in resolution really matter in the field? Back outside, in starlight conditions, we can see that the G14 P2 and the NVT7 are quite evenly matched when it comes to resolving details on this excavator. Next, we're gonna test the imaging latency on the G14 series. Latency is one of the major issues with more traditional digital night vision devices such as the NVG30. So we're gonna compare the latency on the NVG30 versus that on the G14 SE and the G14 P2. Let's turn off the LED light and see how fast the units respond. Did you see that? This was the last frame before the LED was switched off. And the first frame after the light has disappeared 5 milliseconds later. And by frame 2, within 10 milliseconds of the light disappearing, we can see that the G14 SE and the P2 have already responded. And well, for the NVG30, we need to wait until frame 14 or 70 milliseconds later to see it respond. Next, let's talk about sensor readout speed. A slow readout will give you rolling shutter jello effect when you pan the unit around, which is obviously not good if you're trying to move fast with the unit. Trust me, high speed with the NVG30 is nauseating. So, is the rolling shutter on the G14 series any better? Let's test it out with this 200Hz stroboscope. Here, all units are set to their highest frames per second mode, while the NVG30 needs 14 milliseconds to read out its sensor, the G14 series can do it in just over 9 milliseconds. So, what does this mean for use in the field? Well, firstly, this means that you will get little to no rolling shutter distortion when wearing the unit and doing high-speed movements with it. Verticals remain vertical and straight lines remain straight. The combination of low latency and fast sensor readout means that the G14 series is well suited for high-speed, high-mobility applications out in the field. Yup, you can take the G14 series airsofting or mill simming and it will perform just like an analog unit. Next, let's talk about dynamic range. A lot of the more traditional digital night vision devices such as the MVG30 use security camera sensors that sacrifice dynamic range for sensitivity. This means the bright parts of the image will be blown out easily and the shadows will be crushed to black easily. This means the MVG30 will struggle in environments with dynamic lighting. So, how much better is the G14 series? Well, using this Xyla21 test chart, we found that while the NVG30 only produces around 6.5 stops of dynamic range, the G14 SE can produce 10.5 stops, and the G14 P2 can produce 11 stops. 
And the advantage of having good dynamic range is that you can operate in environments with dynamic lighting without being blinded by bright lights while still being able to see into the shadows. And that is it, thanks for watching.